We're going to mount the gun, so we're going to probably start on a little You're bit. You're always of... going to get different different ideas because there's no qualifications. You, you can, you know, you could decide this afternoon that I'm going to be a shooting instructor. And you could write on the internet that you're the best shooting instructor in the world and somebody's going to believe you and pay you to take lessons. And to me, somewhere along the line, we need to self-regulate and police these people. You know, that uh, people are actually getting what they pay for. That if you're having a world-class lesson, it needs to be from a world-class instructor. Not just because it's wrote on the internet. I think somewhere along the line, we do need an association that's going to police that maybe, where you do have to pass certain tests and I know there's the CPSA course, but it's not necessarily the right one. You know, if you're a level one CPSA instructor, that probably means that you know the brass goes in second. That's about your limitations. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that's not, it's um, somewhere on the line. I just think that needs to be self pleased. We've <laughs> started again, you've got me laughing now. <laughs> not so all, all instructors are made equal then. No, I just think uh, you, you, as long as you're getting value for money, I think it is important. You know, there's plenty of instructors out there that are not like myself, that are not, you know, multiple time world champions, but they have a place in the sport. You know, corporate days, taking the beginners to, to be safe and sound. I just think there's a lot more honesty needed from instructors. You know, my level is to take you from here to here, and then I need to pass you on. And I think if people were honest, we'd grow better as a sport because people can spend a lot of money, learn nothing, get despondent and, and go to another sport. If people were just honest and say, you know what, I can take a beginner and make him safe, and then I'm going to pass him on to Joe Bloggs, who's going to take him from C to A, and then if he wants to progress, he's going to have to go to somebody better. But that doesn't happen. These people say, I'm a world-class instructor, I'm a world champion. I mean, I can go to my local bar and meet a stranger, and his best friend shot for England and been world champion six times. You know, and all they've ever done is shot two pigeons. But people just spread the word, and they think... It's just, I think if, if, if that happened where we were a lot more honest in, in our ability to teach, the sport would grow a lot more. But there's some good coaches out there. Tremendous coaches, yeah. There's a good selection. And, you know, I shoot, I shoot a certain way. If that doesn't suit you, there's, there's plenty out there that are as good as me in what they do. It may be different to what I do. That doesn't mean it's wrong, but there's a lot out there that are wrong. What do you think you do best? Everything. I would... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm very analytical in what I do. When I, I want to be the best, I want to be known as the best instructor out there that will go and do things that other coaches haven't even thought of yet. And a lot of coaches, and I believe the, the, the poorer coaches, are the people that are outcome-based. So they tell you where you missed, not why you missed, where all of my lessons are process-based. So I'm going to make you better in the cage. It's up to you whether you hit them or not. If I tell you that you're two feet behind it and you give it two more feet and hit it, that's great. We've got instant success, but tomorrow you're two foot behind it again because we haven't changed anything. So mine's process, not outcome. My job is to make you better inside the cage. And a lot of times on my lessons, you'll hear me say to shooters, that's the perfect shot. That doesn't mean they hit it. That means technically they did everything I asked them to do. The lead was wrong. Lead's their problem, not mine. Because I could walk around behind any shooter, tell them the exact lead on every bird, they'll shoot a personal best. Tomorrow they are no better than they started the, the previous morning. And I think that's where a lot of coaches go wrong. Okay. If you had a million quid to invest in this sport, where would you put it? I think there's many places to put it. It's easy to say youth, but is that well spent? Because when they pass a driving test and find women, they'll leave the sport. So you've invested in the future, but you're going to lose them anyway. What I would like to see is the conglomerate of the top shooters come together and help the CPSA make the coaching program better help them make their championship better because you know if you pick myself I've, I've, I've shot every world championship since 1994 you know I know the good and the bad I can help them you know and I'm probably one of the busiest instructors in the world why the CPSA don't come to me and say can you help us rewrite our program can you help us make our instructors better I, and I would do it because I believe it's going to make the whole sport better as a, as a whole, but they, I don't think they use what assets are available to them. You know, you've got Richard Folds, Olympic medalist, Peter Wilson, Olympic medalist, myself, multiple time world champion, and we never questioned. What other sport could the you, you association access those people and get free free advice? I think it's, it's crazy that we don't utilize the big names in this country that we have. 
Okay, last question. Wastes of time. People that dedicate time to doing stuff that really isn't that important and you think they should be focusing their efforts yeah. elsewhere. Poor practice and pattern plates. You know, if you're going to go and shoot 100 targets and you've left, paid your £35 for your targets, you've £30 for your cartridge and you've not learned anything, you might as well not have gone. You know, you've got to go out there with a purpose. And that may be missing. You may be trying something new that doesn't work, but you took that out the equation. And pattern plates are the one thing that drive me crazy. You see people walking up there with boards of paper. When I go to a, to a competition and I call Paul and a pattern plate comes out, I'll start to shoot them. Until then, stay away from them. They don't tell you anything. Unless you're somebody like me that's actually text testing how hard that penetration is or you understand what you're looking at. But as for gun fit, I don't see any rhyme or reason to shoot at a stationary two foot square piece of cardboard that's going to give you absolutely zero feedback. But what if you're mounting it and it's a foot above where you're hoping it's going to hit? But how do you know you're aiming in the right place? Mm. You could have aimed a foot high and it, actually, it was actually perfect. How many people can stand upright, hold something very, very still, point and shoot? You, know, you just never know. You never know where your impact point is. But if you go and throw a 20 yard going away trap shot, which we all know you've got to shoot straight at, and you shoot straight at it, and you turn it to a black dust, your gun fits okay. If you miss it a foot high, that doesn't mean your gun's high, that probably means your gun's low. But now we're learning on what we're going to shoot at, but we don't shoot, you know, I just, I don't, I don't let my students shoot them. I don't want to shoot them. I would much rather pattern on what I'm going to shoot at. Thank you very much. Pleasure.